I've built a ton of gaming PCs. From old office PCs turned into gaming machines, to my main gaming PC with a 7800X 3D and a 4090, and everything in between. And I'm by no means perfect. I've made a ton of mistakes over the years, but I've also been able to help some other people fix theirs. So I'm gonna show you 15 mistakes that first time PC builders make that you should absolutely avoid. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen number eight and number 11 happen, so don't miss those. Some of these mistakes will only cost you performance and some of them will cost you some big money. Like our first mistake, number one, is you've got to make sure that your parts go together. Now, a lot of people know about the website PCPartPicker.com. It's a website where you can pick any of the PC parts that are known and in, in the database, which is pretty much all of them, and you can see which ones go together. But there are a few things you need to look out for because this thing's not foolproof. As far as things like your CPU, motherboard, RAM, all of those things will work just fine. The only thing you might have to look out for is if there's a BIOS update, but most of the newer motherboards these days have a BIOS flashback option, so you should be perfectly fine. But mistake number two is people who sold use PC part picker don't pay attention to the case that they pick. Most of the time you won't be able to pick a case that's too small for your motherboard. The main things you need to keep in mind is there are three motherboard sizes that are most common. ITX, Micro ATX, and Full ATX. There's also an EATX but those are not super duper common or at least not what I've seen so I guess there is four. The only thing you have to look out for is if you buy an ATX mid tower case or any full size ATX case and you buy a Micro ATX motherboard Technically that motherboard will go inside, but you're gonna have like a gap at the bottom that some people will get weirded out about, but it's just totally personal preference. Not gonna hurt your system. Now these next few steps are gonna be huge wastes of money. Starting with antivirus software. Software like McAfee and Norton Security will try to totally take your money. And if you're not careful, you'll pay way too much for things like antivirus. The Windows Defender is perfectly fine and you're not gonna have any trouble as long as you're responsible online and don't click a bunch of shady links that get sent to you via Discord or Facebook look if you're older person, you know? So as long as you watch out for what you're looking up on the internet and what you're clicking on, you should be okay with just Windows Defender and not waste a monthly fee and hundreds of dollars paying for virus software. Number four is getting caught up too much in CPU names. I can't tell you how many times I see this in comment sections, but the names i5, i7, i9, none of those really matter. It's what comes afterwards. All the time on places like Amazon, you'll see a listing for a computer with an i7 processor only for it to be something like a third or fourth gen i7 that's going to be really, really bad that the 12th gen i3 is going to totally crush it in gaming performance. Ryzen has those same names. I just didn't have two of the same series like this is AM4 and this is AM5, but they still have the same thing. Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7. And with the new Intel CPUs, it's going to be like the Core Ultra 5 or the Core Ultra 7, something like that. Still going to have the 579. Don't get caught up in those. It's what comes after that's important. Number five is paying full price for a Windows key. Now you can definitely pay over $100 for a Windows license and you'll get to keep it forever, but they still make it super difficult for you to move your Windows license from one PC to the other. At least it's super annoying in my opinion. But you can go to some reputable websites like GVG Mall, SCD Key, and they give you legit OEM licenses. Those will be tied to only the system that you put them on. So you definitely can't transfer them, but they work 100% of the time. I've never had any issues. And I've bought from those two websites and I think Keys Fan, so those three for sure never had any issues. I've bought multiple keys from each. So the next few mistakes that we have have to do with actually putting your system together. So these are a combination of can cost you money and could cost you performance. We're gonna start with the CPU installation. 99% of the time that's everybody's first step and if you're too careless with this or you're not careful enough, you can very easily bend a pin and totally wreck your parts. Now, if you're going with an older PC build like AM4 socket, which is still really good for gaming performance, they do have some tiny pins on the CPU. CPUs that you can easily bend if you're not careful. But all of the newer sockets like AM5 and Intel, they use what they call an LGA socket, which means the pins are on the actual motherboard itself. So if you're not careful and you drop something on the motherboard while those pins are exposed, you're gonna be totally disappointed because your motherboard's probably not gonna work. So just please be careful. Number seven doesn't only apply to first time PC builders. I can't tell you how many comments I see in my comment section every time I build a PC about people complaining about thermal paste. Now you can definitely put too little thermal paste. I guess too much is only an issue if you put some in the socket itself because then there's the whole bending pins thing again trying to clean it. But just put a decent amount of thermal paste. People argue about putting a dot in the center or putting a line down the CPU, making an X. Oh, there's so many different types of arguments. But I've seen a ton of videos on TikTok and YouTube that none of that really makes that big of a difference. So just put a decent amount of thermal paste. Don't go crazy with it, but don't put too little and you'll be okay. Now number eight, 
I've seen way too many times and I'm just shocked at this point that we still see it. So it's super important. When you're putting your CPU cooler on, unless you're running a stock cooler and if you buy any sort of air cooler or AIO off the market, it's going to have a sticker on the cooler. So please, 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 peel it off. Your games could crash, your PC could crash, like just peel it off. It's a super common mistake. You'd be surprised how many people have done it, but just make, make sure you peel it off. Another one similar to thermal paste is number nine, which is fan orientation. Now your fans can be turned two different ways, intake and exhaust. A lot of people say you just wanna have some balanced pressure, have just as many intake as you have outtake. I tend to like more intake than outtake, but that's just personal preference. The only time I've seen a huge issue is if you put fans at the bottom underneath your graphics card, just make sure that they're going to be intake fans so they're not working against your graphics card that's trying to pull in cold air and cool that off. Other than that, you'll be good. Number 10 is probably only going to apply to people who build budget PCs, which a lot of people are building a budget PC for their first gaming PC, and that's the IO shield. Your IO shield is a little silver piece that comes with your motherboard, and it normally only comes with cheaper motherboards these days. If you don't put that in your case first, you're not going to be able to go back and fix it without taking everything out. So just make sure you put that in before you put your motherboard in. It's not going to hurt performance, it just doesn't look very nice. Number 11 is another big one for me, and that's running your RAM in dual channel. Dual channel RAM is how you're going to get the most performance. So what you're going to do in a motherboard that has four slots is you're going to skip the first slot that's closest to your CPU, put a RAM stick, skip a slot, put a RAM stick. Some people call this one and three, some people call it two and four. Your motherboard manual will tell you exactly what it's supposed to be called for your motherboard, but pretty much all motherboards these days want you to put it in the second second slot and the fourth slot if you're counting left to right starting with closest to your CPU. Number 12 is a big one that a lot of people forget, and that's to enable the speeds for your RAM. A lot of RAM is marketed as 32 gigs of RAM running at 6,000 megahertz, or if it's DDR4 RAM for AM4, or 12, 13, 14 gen Intel, you know, it might run at something at like 3,200 mega transfers per second or 3,600, and those speeds are not the speeds you're gonna get when you first boot up your computer. You're gonna have to go into the BIOS and enable something called XMP, DOCP, or expo depending on how your system set up. You're gonna miss out on a ton of FPS for this, so please do that. Just keep in mind that if you're running something that's really old or it's coming from a pre-built company, you may not have this feature, but if you're building it yourself, it's totally worth enabling that on your computer, more FPS. But that's the only type of overclocking I personally recommend. So that brings us to tip number 13, is people worry way too much about overclocking. Just don't worry about it. Unless you just like are super into it and you go watch a ton of videos from experts that know what they're doing. And even then, the best people in the world, they're not getting that much out of these newer CPUs because they're coming out of the box and running at super fast speeds. The same with the graphics cards. It's just not worth it anymore to overclock it in 2024. That's my opinion. I wouldn't stress about it. Just go build your PC. I let overclocking bother me for years and years and years before I ever built my first PC. Please don't let that happen to you. Now, number 14's happened way too much and and it's really sad to me to see people that think they broke their PC when they just plugged up a cord wrong. On the back of your PC case, there is two different ports for you to be able to plug in your HDMI or your display port. You need to make sure that you plug it into your graphics card and not your motherboard. Otherwise, you're not gonna get a picture, and if you do, you're gonna be missing a ton of FPS. And number 15 is controlling your RGB and changing the lights. If your motherboard supports it, there's motherboard software for your motherboard. So whatever brand you have for your your motherboard, whether it's Asus, MSI, ASRock, whatever it is, go to the website, download their RGB software, and you should be able to change it if their fans are set up properly. Otherwise, you may not be able to change the colors unless your fans come with some sort of remote or you buy an adapter for that, or your case allows you to use the reset button to change the fan color. That's the 15 tips I got for you, so let me know which ones I missed down in the comments, and if you guys want to see an awesome PC and how to build it step-by-step, step, this is one of my favorite in 2024.